Now, getting to the news that's happening right now, I want to share something fun with you. I was walking around Austin, the, the city of Austin yesterday, and I saw this stop sign. And for those of you watching on PrisonPlanet.tv, you can see this. I'll explain it for those of you listening on the radio. It's a stop sign, a regular stop sign that you see on the road, but someone has painted in some very legible white paint underneath the word stop, they wrote the police state. And it's very visible. I've got a picture showing on the screen right now for those of you watching. And I just thought, isn't this great? You know, in Austin, there's this, this sort of, uh, just this vibe of, of people wanting freedom, people wanting to be free. And I know this is true all over the country in other cities. I know that all, many of those listening are out there putting posters up, are, are running website blogs and posting videos on YouTube and really just talking about freedom and liberty and why we shouldn't live in a society where we're monitored 24 seven. We're supposed to have basic privacy. We're supposed to have basic free speech. We're supposed to have the rights to go protest without being arrested for it, by the way, without having to ask for permits from the king. Oh, please, king, can we beg you for a permit to go protest your policies? I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens in America and it makes no sense. But along the lines of surveillance, here's what else is really happening right now. The drones, we've got major news for you here on the drones. Here's an article to lead this off. This is from EFF.org. The FAA has now released thousands of pages of drone records. And what they reveal is that flights of drone flights in the United States are frequent. And these records reveal where they're flying, how long they are flying, how long, uh, how long they stay in the air, uh, in effect, uh, their locations, the frequency, their, the, the 125 drone certificates and accompanying documents that says that the, F the FAA released today total thousands of pages and were released in response to the EFF's Freedom of Information Act lawsuit. Now, what this shows is that drones are being deployed everywhere. I mean, all across the country, major cities and major universities. And we're gonna bring you some information right now that is, there you go, there's, there's a story up on the screen for those of you watching. I mean, this is information out of Texas A&M, Texas State University, Miami-Dade Police Department, uh, Mississippi Department of Marine Resources, uh, North Little Rock Police Department, Cornell University, and many, many more. University of Connecticut, for example. So I thought we need to take a serious look at what is the drone near future situation. I put together an analysis last night in anticipation of being here today. And I wanna bring you this analysis because it's got a lot of important information. Now, I don't know if you can get a, a, a shot of this we're gonna talk about some drone protection uh, uh, fabrics. Right here on, uh, on my left in the studio here is a Mylar space blanket. We're gonna talk about why this might be useful to protect yourself from drones. You might say, why do, why do we need to be protected from drones? What's that all about? Well, here's the deal. Dr drones, of course, are remote controlled systems. The question is, who is controlling them? Now, if a, if a local police department that respects the constitution is controlling them, that's arguably not a bad thing. They can actually fight crime, help keep the peace and so on. But what about if the US military is controlling them and using them against civilian populations in the United States? Even worse, even worse, what if they get hacked by China, for example? We know that the Chinese government has invested literally billions of dollars in uh, hacking resources. They even have a hacking university where they train the top, the, the brightest students in uh, computer malware development, uh, uh, social engineering that leads to hacking, you know, discovery of passwords and things like that. And of course, there's the Stuxnet and the flame virus that was co-developed by the United States and Israel, according to reports that is very advanced, very advanced. What if China got its hands on that kind of code or something similar? The question is, could the drones, let's say there's 5,000 drones flying above US cities on any given day in the next five years. And that's that's not out of the realm of, of what could really happen, even based on what the FAA has approved, by the way. I think they, they approve something like uh, laws that would allow 30,000 drones to be deployed across the country. So what if there are thousands of drones that are flying over the United States? And what if some of them are armed? Because now Raytheon is working on a small missile, sort of like a small Hellfire missile that can be carried and deployed by the drones. And it's a self-guided missile. It locks on target, it's got its own navigation system, it's got its own cameras, it's got its own guidance systems, its own propellant and so on. 
So a drone can fly into any area and then launch a missile onto a target, whatever target is selected by the drone operator. So again, what if the drone operator becomes a hacker group from China or North Korea, theoretically? Or what if it's a rogue group of hackers uh, from anywhere that just takes it over because the security is so bad? Now, you might say this could never happen, but you'd be wrong because, of course, Iran already used a GPS spoofing attack to intercept the navigation of a US drone, I believe that was a Predator drone, and to land it on a runway in Iran where they then took possession of that technology and began to take it apart and decode it and try to figure it out. That was a simple GPS spoof. And recently in Texas, I don't know which university, I think it was just a Texas State University, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a university in Texas recently, I think just two months ago, also did a spoofing attack exercise to show that you could spoof the drone and make it land wherever you want it to land or, or make it fly wherever you want it to fly. So, so we know that these drones can be taken over by hackers or a ground deployed spoofing force. And why does this matter to you? And why do you need to know how to potentially protect yourself from drones? Because again, what happens if we've got 5,000 drones in the sky, a foreign hacker group or even a domestic enemy hacker group that just declares war on the American people decides to just unleash the drones on the people and unleash the, the small hellfire type of missiles or deploy surveillance against the American people. How do you protect yourself against those drones? So in, in order to help answer that question, I put together some information here for you talking about what the drone payloads could be and the surveillance payloads. Now we know drones can have regular visible cameras, infrared cameras, which sense body heat, which means if you're walking around at night, you're gonna be able to be picked up by these drones and targeted by them. Again, they could be in the hands, they could be controlled by um, a destructive force or an enemy force or a hacker force. They can deploy radiation sensors and microphone sensors. Now in terms of payloads, here are the drone payloads that we, I think, are going to see in the next few years. Number one, miniature missiles that can just target individuals, vehicles or structures, buildings, for example. And this article, by the way, this is on naturalnews.com right now. I don't know yet if it's up on infowars.com, probably will be soon if it's not already. Drones can also have high explosive satchel payloads where they simply drop the satchel, it explodes on contact. Drones can have radioactive dirty bomb payloads. This is easy for them to do. They just get a bunch of radioactive dust, which can be collected from a variety of sources. I'm not gonna give out the details because I don't wanna encourage anybody to try this. It's very dangerous, obviously. And only a true terrorist would try to do something like this or, or someone trying to set up a terror type of event for whatever reason they might have in mind. But they could drop radioactive dust on a city at a medium altitude and create just a total chaos in that city. And that would be a terrible situation to see happen. Drones can also have self-destruction bombs where if they are captured or if control is lost, they can self-destruct. So evading these drones is gonna be crucial. Now, right after this break, when we come back, I'm gonna give you some tactics and techniques to evade drones. And this is a skill that all of us may need to use someday if we wanna stay alive if these drones get taken over by bad people. So we'll talk about that on the other side. Stay right with us here on The Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back after this break. Have you been to InfoWarsShop.com lately? Express your inner patriot with these brand new InfoWars t-shirts. Say it loud with the InfoWars bullhorn shirt. Or educate the sheeple with the Bill of Rights shirt. Grope the public's mind with the TSA shirt. And with this shirt, you can let the dark side know of the Rebel Alliance's power. All available at InfoWarsShop.com. We are discussing ways to avoid the rise of the machines, in other words, to protect yourself from the drones. You know, it turns out that the rise of the machines depicted in the original term, Terminator movies is, is pretty accurate, except they're not going to be bipedal machines, that is, machines running around on the ground with legs. They're going to be flying machines. It turns out it's a lot easier to automate navigation of the air than it is the ground. The ground, you know, ground is very complex. If you've ever looked into robotics, uh, navigating the ground is very complex, but the drones are very easy to deploy in both the ocean because water is uh, is an easy medium in, into which uh, drones can, can navigate and the air. And so you're going to see Navy drones and you're going to see a lot of then, of course, airborne drones, which we're already 
starting to see, and they're going to be weaponized very soon. Raytheon, again, is already uh, tested and is about to make available a, a small missile, a small missile system that will be carried by drones and will be able to be fired. And of course, the predators already fire uh, certain types of weapons, but we're talking about we're talking about domestic drones being able to carry weapons, including potentially small arms fire. You know, can you imagine your local police department having a drone that can peer into your windows and fire, you know, two, two, three rounds into your <laughs> into your bedroom if they uh, if they think you're cooking meth or something? I mean, uh, what if they get the wrong address? How many times do they raid the wrong house? Anyway. We are talking here on the Alex Jones Show. And by the way, thank you for joining us. Got a lot of great interviews coming up uh, just straight ahead. And this is Mike Adams filling in in case you're wondering, where's Alex? You know, he, uh, he's, he's, uh, he'll be back, of course, but I'm filling in for him today and tomorrow. But now getting to drone defenses, this is critical. During the daylight, you're going to want to use, of course, a, and, and again, let me set the context here, okay? This is if the drones get taken over by bad people, which could be a foreign government with a hack attack. It could be a rogue element of an, of an existing government. It could be who knows what, somebody trying to set up a false flag attack somewhere and use a drone to, to make something happen. Whatever the case may be, you may find yourself in a situation where you need to avoid the drones in order to stay safe, protect your family, protect your community, protect your liberty, and so on. To do that, First, let's start with the visual element right here, and I brought this. Uh, this is an ATAX pattern uh, camo, and the reason that this matters for drone protection, and the, the, the pattern is called ATAX, or Advanced Tactical, A-T-A-C-S, and the company, this is a, a licensed uh, trademark pattern, and it's you'll see it deployed uh, on a lot of uh, you know, military uniforms and things like that these days. This pattern is a fractal pattern, which is a pattern within a pattern, which means that even when you look at it up close, you guys get a shot of it there. For those of you listening on the radio, you can check this out on prisonplanet.tv and see what I'm talking about. This is a pattern within a pattern, which means if you zoom in and look at it closely, it still looks like camo. The image is kind of blurry, but even from a long ways away, zoomed out, it still has a larger fractal pattern that confuses vision recognition systems of automated drones. Now, I did a little bit of work in my history, uh, not even going to go into the detail, but uh, I, uh, I have a technology background, as, as many of you know, from the software industry, and I did a little bit of work in vision recognition systems. Now, vision recognition systems look to, to find edges. And for example, vision recognition system is going to try to find a straight line, a straight, a, a square corner, um, uh, an obvious shape like a circle, like the, the edge of a person's hat or the edge of a person's head, for example, sharp contrast between colors, things like that. This kind of pattern, this ATAX pattern, confuses vision recognition systems because they can't find any edges in it. So this kind of pattern or netting over vehicles and things like that can protect you from being uh, seen by a drone that might ha be controlled by bad people with bad intent. Now, moving on to nighttime drones, we've got this. Show and tell time here on the Alex Jones Show. This is a, uh, you can probably hear this on the radio. This is a Mylar space blanket or what's called a thermal blanket. And these are available in camping kits and survival kits. These block infrared light, which is a non-visible spectrum, of course. And th uh, because of that, they, they keep the heat inside your body. The, one of the ways your body loses a lot of heat is by radiating infrared wavelengths. So this Mylar space blanket can keep those in so that you're reflecting heat back to yourself, which is why they're useful on a cold night or as an emergency blanket. They're also great for preventing you from being seen by infrared or thermal imaging systems. And I've tested this and it works great. You simply make a poncho out of it or you sew it into another poncho that you can drape over your body. And then you can no longer be seen by thermal cameras. This is like camo against the Terminator is what it is. And they're real cheap. I think you can get them sometimes for two bucks and you have to sew them in yourself. They're not real durable, but if you, if you, if you have a little bit of sewing skill, you can sew them in. Also, practice light discipline. If you turn on a flashlight at night, you're going to be seen because the light sensitivity of these drone cameras is very, very high. So those are some of the techniques that you can use to keep yourself safe from drones controlled by bad people. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day. 
to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 